Let me preface by saying that um, I think these Digital Foundry videos are providing a very important service for the industry in general. Um, I think they're keeping a lot of developers honest um, because it's oftentimes hard for developers to be honest about things like frame times, uh, vsync, input response times, you know, um, either because they may not have anybody on staff who understands, um, you know, the, the minutia of details in those issues or because um, it might just be, it's, it's hard to talk about a lot of that stuff without inviting criticism um, because there, there is just no magic bullet solution. Um, it's always about some kind of trade-off and usually the wise thing to do is to defer to the user and allow them uh, what type of trade they'd like to make there. Um, but that's it. Um, I did find this DF video to be uh, a bit lacking in terms of um, not quite uh, going over some of the important details of how uh, vertical synchronization um, factors into the um, the CPU-based frame limiting that FromSoft elected to do, um, and not really explaining um, why changing the presentation interval would add uh, add time to input latency, and not really coming to a conclusion of hey, you know, here's how you could consistently present frames at 30 hertz. Um, while minimizing the amount of input latency that you sacrifice in the process. And so, uh, I was compelled uh, one of these rare occasions to make one of these stupid talking head videos myself. <laughs> uh, because, um, you know, I feel like it would be valuable to uh, put this stuff out there and especially to propose uh, what could be done for these games to um, both minimize that input latency and ensure that they are submitting at a consistent 30 hertz. Um, and so, um, I guess I'll start by saying uh, what FromSoft has elected to do here is basically they want it, they want to uh, keep everything vsync, and that's very important um, because if you don't vsync, of course, you just see tearing all over the place. You have inconsistent uh, frame times and submission times and all that. It's a mess. Um, a lot of developers still don't understand the importance of vSync. I still see so many PC games um, where you have a full, a full screen mode that uh, just assumes whatever um, system-wide default there is for vSync doesn't have an option to toggle it on or off. You know, very bad practice. <laughs> but um, anyway, so FromSoft understands that vSync is important uh, and some console uh, certification guidelines force them to understand that whether they'd like to or not and um, so they're trying to sync at 30 Hertz but they know the game is generally only going to run at 30 frames per second and so they are um, electing to basically limit the frame rate to 30 frames per second by uh, seeing how much time has elapsed on the CPU and just kind of sitting there installing um, as they need to to ensure that things only run at 30 frames per second and uh, the reason I would think primarily that they've done this is to um, try to minimize input latency, as the DF video concludes at the end, you know, um, taking the naive approach that these PS4 patches do of saying, okay, we're going to change swap interval to two, um, and at least in ter common, um, you know, API terms, um, when you're presenting to a a uh, 60 hertz display, a swap interval of uh, 1 means 60 hertz, a swap interval of 2 means 30 hertz, and so on. And so uh, the naive approach there, which a lot of AAA games do as well, is to just say, okay, we're going to change the uh, presentation interval to 2, and we're going to, you know, just let, um, let the frames lie where they lie and not do any kind of CPU limiting. And the downside of that is that, uh, say you're triple buffered, and triple buffering basically means that you can um, run up to three frames into the future on the CPU. So I guess to give kind of the anatomy of a frame real quick here, let's say that um, you are triple buffered at 30 hertz, and uh, you are uh, you know just using um, standard platform. Um, presentation to do all of your synchronization and all that, you're not CPU limiting. And so what that means is that 
if you have um, something close to a perfect world where you manage to get three frames ahead of yourself. So you've, let's say you've completed three frames in something crazy like 0 0.01 milliseconds and you've got all those frames processed, submitted to the GPU, the P GPU is finished processing them, it's ready to uh, present them for display. Um, now you come around and you say, okay, I have a fully completed frame and you've pulled the input for that frame at some point in the past whether that's at the beginning of the CPU frame or mid frame or whatever. So you've already got you know this much input latency that you're dealing with. So now you've got this completed frame on the CPU and you say okay I'm ready to submit this to the GPU. But the GPU says no I you know I still have all three of these frames locked down because I haven't been able to submit any of them yet either because I'm running behind or because um, I'm waiting to just be able to present them because we haven't managed to hit another vsync boundary yet. And so when that happens, then you just start sitting there with that input data and waiting and you're eating all of that input latency. And so like in the case where um, you're running all the way ahead, you now have your frame at the back of these other frames. And so you have the input latency of these two frames plus the input latency of this frame um, and you're just waiting to be able to add this frame to the queue. And so um, basically what that means is that your worst case is never going to quite be something like 33.3 milliseconds times 3 if you're triple buffering at 30 hertz. But it can get pretty high up there basically depending on how long um, those existing frames in your triple buffering queue um, have been sitting on their inputs combined with um, potential delay in inserting stuff into the queue, combined with uh, delay between when you pulled your input and when you actually did manage to submit the um, uh, GPU command buffer associated with that particular frame of input. And so it, it gets really complicated really fast there and you can end up um, in a triple buffered um, properly synchronized 30 hertz situation eating just insane amounts of input latency. Um, and kind of the irony is there, um, the, fur the better you're running, so in other words, the further ahead um, that you are running, potentially the worse um, triple buffering is doing for your input latency. Um, so basically, um, the, the closer to ideal thing that I would recommend there is that in this case, um, where FromSoft is triple buffering and they're using their own CPU limiter, I would say the better idea would be to double buffer and uh, just properly synchronize, remove the CPU limiter. And basically what that would mean is that you are um, cutting you know, that extra 33.3 millisecond frame off of your input latency worst case, which is already a massive win. And you are um, relying on the fact that you will probably not miss too many of those 33.3 millisecond frames and if you are missing a lot of them you know that third uh, third buffer there probably isn't going to save you from having the game feel like shit anyway right <laughs> and um, you know triple buffering is very commonplace um, especially in triple A games these days it's, it's rare to find a game that isn't using triple buffering behind the scenes um, and the idea there is that, you know, you can afford to miss more frame times. So if you have a 30 millisecond frame and it's fine and good, but then you have two 34 millisecond frames in a row and you fucked up, you missed your frame times, um, instead of, you know, being at the mercy of wherever those frame submissions happen to fall as it relates to VSync, um, you have another couple frames of slop to say, okay, well, here GPU, you know, just take this shit and churn on it. And then the GPU can say, okay, I'm just going to sit on this um, until I have time to present it wherever that falls in, you know, the, the vSync boundary. Um, uh, and so when you do that, you, you can afford to miss more of those frame times and not have that manifest to the user in a way that's basically like, oh, I see an actual visible hitch there. You know, you've got a queue and... It, it hides a lot more of those um, timing inconsistencies and stuff like that. Um, but obviously the downside is um, the more frames that you add to that queue, um, 
not only the more you know resources you have to allocate ahead of time, which is probably not that big of an issue considering you're only dealing with back buffers and command buffers and such. Um, but the, the bigger issue is you're adding more potential input latency and there is a reason that quadruple buffering is not a thing. For example, <laughs> triple buffering is kind of where we capped out and decided, ah, you know, three buffers is probably already pushing it. Even at, you know, even at 60 hertz, you know, three buffers is pushing it. At 30 hertz, three buffers is real nasty. So, um, if you're running at 30 hertz properly v-synced, you definitely want to move down to double buffering. And you're probably not going to see a lot of cases where that actually... T where, where triple buffering would tangibly improve the user experience there. So, um, you know, again, because this is an issue um, where you're going to have a lot of varied preferences and opinions, um, what I would actually advocate for in the case of the, the FromSoft games um, is like we can already see in the case of Elden Ring on PS5, we've got the visual quality uh, versus performance preference. Um, it would uh, probably be wise to standardize, especially for games that sit in this certain demographic of, you know, just hardcore enough for people to care about this kind of thing, for preference to matter to people. Um, it would be good to standardize something that is to the effect of, um, you know, I prefer uh, minimal input latency uh, or, you know, prompt user in input response or however, you know, whatever user-friendly way you'd like to word that. Um, versus I want to ensure a very consistent, a smooth frame delivery experience, you know. Um, and I, I would always be in the latter camp, um, personally, because I can't stand hitches and stutters. But you, it, it also isn't sufficient to just have those two options. You also need to make both of those options better. And so, uh, in the case of what FromSoft is doing right now, um, I haven't actually reverse engineered um, the CPU frame limiting code, but my guess is that it's taking the naive approach that most games do and just saying, okay, you know, make sure this amount of time has elapsed, and it's not saying, well, this is the time that we uh, last successfully presented a frame, and this is, you know, roughly the cadence of our uh, presentation, and these are roughly the CPU time windows where we expect presentation to be happening, and if you do that, you can develop a much more in intelligent and adaptive method that actually uh, keeps in keeps in mind, you know, it, okay, we're we're having to sit here and stall um, on the CPU to make sure things are running at 30 frames per second, but um, maybe we are, you know, very close to one of those windows where where we expect to be able to successfully present, or where we expect our um, existing buffer queue to be, you know, emptied or you know. Um, have one of those en the entries in that queue subtracted or whatever. And so, uh, if you do that, you can you're still going to you know see what we're seeing in these from soft games where you're getting some inconsistency, you're getting some spikes you know above and below that 60 hertz presentation um, time period. But it could potentially be improved a lot. And on the other side of things, of course, you don't want to do what these uh, PS4 patches do and just say, okay, we're not going to do any limiting on the CPU, and we're going to uh, present uh, at 30 hertz, but we're just going to keep on, you know, triple buffering all the rest of it, because that, you know, totally fucks your input latency. And so what you want to do there is you want to move down to double buffering, um, and obviously um, more attention may need to be made to performance there. You may need to do, like, some per per scene optimizations, even, you know, God forbid, <laughs> God forbid we make the game run better, but, you know, you'd want to do another uh, qualitative performance pass through the game with QA and say, okay, now that we're double buffering instead, are there any areas where um, we're seeing especially heinous stuttering and performance spikes and all that? Um, but, uh, for some reason, I suspect that FromSoft has the resources to pull something like that off. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so you know that would be that would be my ultimate solution would be a give users a choice between minimal input latency and um, um, optimal frame submission times, and b um, you know 
actually make both of those options work better. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident, um, you know, I've solved these problems in many different ways on many different titles at this point, and I'm fairly confident I could um, solve, um, solve that problem on both ends, you know, with both options in better ways um, than we have available to us either through uh, these PS4 patches or through from soft stock solution. So I'm available for contracting if you need me. <laughs>